everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike here. The DRF race of the day, Friday, November the 24th. It's at beautiful Del Mar. Let's throw up the field for race number seven, the grade two Hollywood Turf Cup. We're going a mile and a half on the lawn. $200,000 is the purse. Sort of an interesting group in here, Mike. You've got the speed of Balladeer. You've got the consistency of a horse like Speaking Scout, a first-time import from uh, South America, the number three, Luca. And you've got a Chad Brown runner, Francesco Clemente, stepping up in class. Yeah, the, the Chad Brown shipper looks like he has some talent. He's still very lightly raced. Um, kind of a, I don't know if you agree with this or not, Dan. I thought it was kind of a wide-open race. I don't know who I would call the horse to be in here. I agree. I think the favorite in here might be a moderate favorite, maybe in the five to two or three to one range. Let's throw up the Timeform US pace projector. I have to agree with the way Timeform US has this set up. The six Balladeer was the pace setter in the Breeders' Cup turf, went gate to wire in his two prior starts. This is his best game. I would expect him to go to the front. How do you think they ride Astronaut? That's uh, the real question, isn't it? I mean, you know he's capable of going forward, but he's also run really well from off the pace, uh, that horse to me is just a total enigma. I don't really know what you're going to get from him here, but he could be close to the pace, but I, I agree with you and I agree with this pace projector. I think the six is on the lead. Note the LP flags over both the chicklets of the one and the eight. Both of those horses tied for the best late, late pace figure from Timeform US. And here's why for Francesco Clemente, a very impressive performance last time out, only a first level allowance during the Belmont at the Big A meet. He got some pace to run at. He didn't break very well in this mile and three eighths event. He has a long way to go with the 316s, but it looks like he actually has this fairly measured. Yeah, it really does. He had a lot of ground to make up at the top of the stretch here. Now, the horse he's running down here, Royal Spirit, you know, I don't know how good he is, Dan. He's certainly not a, a great at stakes horse, but I, I'll give this horse credit for closing as much ground as he did in that race and actually winning it under, under strong handling. And it's not like he didn't ship over here with some real potential. I mean, he, he showed some real talent uh, over in England uh, as a two and a three-year-old. So I don't know. I, I think this horse has a chance to be pretty good. And I think Chad Brown is shipping him out here into the right kind of race. The two is yes this time. And he's a pretty consistent runner in his own right. He was wired by Balladeer though last time out in the John Henry Turf Championship. Balladeer had the best of it controlling a moderate pace. But yes, this time had a pretty good trip in his own right, tracking behind that horse. And he just didn't fire in the lane. Yeah, I, I didn't see his excuse last time, Dan. Uh, they claimed this horse for 80,000. He's run fine in his first two starts for Peter Miller. Um, and he is very consistent overall, but um, I just I don't, I don't know what race you would point to if you're going to make the case that he could be closer to a horse like Balladeer this time, because this horse had a very good trip in his own right uh, in the John Henry, and he was nowhere in the stretch. It's very hard to analyze these South American shippers, but the number three, Luca, making his first start for trainer Neil Drysdale appears to be pretty good. Never off the board from nine lifetime starts, a group one winner on dirt and on turf, and coming into this race in pretty good form, although we have not seen him since May. Got to look at that last race on turf, Mike. It looked like he had a pretty good trip shooting up the inside and then just getting home in the nick of time i agree with you um, i still thought he ran well uh, it, these horses are really tough to evaluate because you just don't know the kind of competition they're facing I, I guess in the case of this horse you just have to like that he shows up every single time distance is no issue for him neil drysdale you know, maybe it's been a while, Dan. He has a pretty good overall record with these South American imports. Planetario won the San Juan Capistrano, a race that's sort of a, a shadow of what it was in years gone by. And then he ran in the United Nations at Monmouth, a race that's kind of a grade one in name only. That was a race where the pace sort of quickened up early on the third turn. And Planetario just couldn't keep up. He just seems like a true stayer, a one pace type. His last two races have been okay. Maybe getting back out to a mile and a half is what the doctor ordered for this one yeah i'll say longer could be better for him as well but he is another horse um, and i don't know if you agree with this or not dan coming out of that john henry uh in his most recent start i i didn't see his excuse in there he got a pretty good trip in that race i thought he did his best and he not only wasn't he good enough but he got out finished by speaking scout who's back in here who didn't have the clean trip that planetario did last time 
Maybe the distance makes all the difference, but I wanted other horses. The five astronaut has shown versatility throughout his career. He's a graded stakes winner at Del Mar. He won the Del Mar Handicap way back in 2021. His sort of signature victory, though, came in the Red Smith three starts back when he was able to put that field to sleep on the front end. And I have a feeling that that's his preferred running style at this point in his career. They ran him in the Joe Hirsch off the layoff last time out. It was sort of an impossible spot. I was surprised they didn't try to get a little more forward with him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he hated the the soft ground that day. Uh, so maybe that could be an excuse for him, Dan. Again, I I just don't really know what to make of this horse. I know that on his best day, he can be competitive with horses like this. I don't think the mile and a half is, is too far for him either. I just don't know what you're going to get from him here. Is he going to go forward? Um, you know, he's capable of doing that. Is he going to sit and make a run? You know, he's capable of doing that. Um, I just don't know what you're going to get from him here as he sh uh, switches back to the sheriff's barn. Balladeer was getting good going into the Breeders' Cup turf. He was just simply overmatched in that race. Victor Espinosa did what he was supposed to. He got this horse out to the lead, tried to take the field as far as he could, and he did. And the horse actually didn't run too badly before tiring in the stretch. His prior start was the John Henry turf, and he got a great trip controlling the pace that day. And when confronted by Master of Foxhounds, he looked at Master of Foxhounds and said, oh, you're Master of Foxhounds. You don't win very often. I can hold you off. Maybe speaking scout, the third place finisher, uh, ran a little bit of a sneaky good race there. Maybe he did. Uh, I thought this horse ran really well uh, in there as well. Though I Listen, he didn't have a lot of pressure up front. I did not think that was a slow pace. Um, this horse went right to the top, and they actually blew the first turn a little bit too. He went really wide, but he just powered through the stretch the first time to open up on that field, and he just would never let them get into it through the stretch. I thought that was a really good performance. Um, I think he's really dangerous in this race. I guess the mile and a half could be a little bit of a question, though. It certainly is for him, as well as a horse like the seven, Eastern Ocean, who is stretching all the way out off a win against a starter optional claimers going a mile, a runner up effort against starter optional claimers going a mile. He ran pretty well in this race to be second, Mike, and the fourth place horse came back to run second in a $40,000 claimer with a 90 buyer speed figure. He's had a pretty good 2023 overall, but a big step up in class, a big step up in distance. Yeah, hard to make a really strong case for. I mean, he did run well in that race for we're watching there but he also got a really good trip in that race a trip very similar uh, to the one that the winner got and he just got out finished in that race now he's got to stretch out a half a mile the last time speaking scout showed up at del mar he won the grade one hollywood derby we have seen Graham motion have great success time and time again with his east coast based runners shipping out to southern california now he comes out of a third in the john henry turf championship he was wired that day he was running on pretty strongly at the end his lead changes weren't really there but this is the kind of horse that can kick if you give him enough pace yeah trips are really important to him so that that's one thing that you really have to uh, concern yourself with if he's going to take money in here damn it he ran really well last time i thought I mean, that's one of those races where the one, two finishers, of course, were up front the entire way. This horse did. He was caught behind horses when that field came to the stretch. And he really couldn't get his momentum up until they were pretty much all straightened away. And he could only really run the last eighth of a mile. And he really ran the last eighth of a mile. Maybe a little bit unlucky last time. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Race Inform YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for a really good race year after year, the Hollywood Turf Cup. We're both going to go with horses that might be a little questionable, stretching all the way out to a mile and a half, but are both in good form. Speaking Scout will be running late. Balladeer will be controlling the pace. I'm going to hope Speaking Scout just gets the right trip this time and maybe can make it a little bit closer. I liked Balladeer's last race quite a bit, Dan. I'll wait and see what kind of price he is yeah. in here, though. He has the kind of form, I think, coming into this race that could take some money. And I don't think I would go too short on it, but I liked his last race a lot. I put Speaking Scout on top, and I, I got Chad's horse in there because I think that horse has a ton of upside. 8163 for Mike, 6842 for me for your Friday race of the day, the Hollywood Turf Cup at Del Mar. Good luck.